What's going on guys? So today on this Shoki third party Transformers review, we're going to take a look at a very tiny Ultra. Ultra Magnus. With a magic square transporter. Alright guys, so here we have the little bitty magic square box for the transporter or their version of Ultra Magnus. Of course we have the obligatory magic square box with our little weird robot dude who's always playing with the figure like i said now this is bigger of course than the sideswipe box was because bigger figure yeah that's what happens and you got msb04 yay it's only suitable for persons over 16 hey i'm right in the middle of that you come to this side and you've got magnus in his bot mode and a barcode that's hard to look at wow and come over here he's still in his bot mode weird and come to the top, he's in his bot. Okay, come to the back. You've got bot mode, bot mode, bot mode, bot mode. Truck, pretty cool. And it's a nice box, nothing major. Website there, kind of G1E. Come to the bottom, you got all obligatory warnings and made in China and recycled boxes. And zero three year olds will be unhappy. Coolness. Let's get to the rest of the stuff. So before we get to the actual figure, we look at the rest of the things come in the box. You do get instructions and a tiny character card with all the powers and skills and things like that. That's pretty cool. It's funny that they make them tiny when they could totally just make them normal size for character cards. And the instructions are actually fairly well done, although compared to something like DX9, some of their instructions are a little bit harder to follow. Like, okay, this part has to go here. This part swings around this. But it's just got kind of vague arrows. But that's it for what's in the box. So let's come down and look at what's in the truck. So here we have Ultra Magnus in his truck mode. Very, very G1-esque with his nice, like, bluish color. And you got the whites going on there. You got some nice reds. Got a very nice chrome, actually die cast bumper there. Really neat. Wheels roll, but not very well. They are tiny, but they are pinned, which is neat. So he can almost roll. He drags pretty badly. So especially here with this uh, crotchy part here, it's just it's never going to be like rolling. Oh, actually, this is mistransformed. Hold well on. Let me fix these back wheels and won't drag as much. And maybe it'll roll. There we go. And he rolls a little bit better. And that screwed up the truck. But anyway, his classic uh, truck mode looks just like a tiny G1 Prime. Because that's basically how he's supposed to look. Now, I do have Autobot logos on here from Repro Labels. This is just some of the basic logos. If they ever put out an actual sticker sheet for him, I would likely get that. But the little kind of universal stickers totally work. Although they are off-cut, as we sort of saw with the... Um, DX9 Sound or Sonic Wizard that I looked at. But the details are pretty cool. He has his car transport mode. Um, although he's not really going to transport much because he's pretty small. So if we bring in Magic Square Sideswipe, uh, you can see a massive size problem here. <laughs> this is a giant car carrying truck and uh, the other car doesn't even fit in said truck. Also, Bumblebee sort of does from New Wave, but still ridiculously big. I mean, if you want to compare them even to the X9 Dutch, Dutch is way, way bigger, which is totally incorrect. Also, uh, not full on Dutch, obviously. You'll see this coming up later. But, that being said, he's still pretty cool. He's even got his big old missiles hanging out the front here. And if you want, you can bump the camera with your hand. You don't have to, but you definitely can. You can store his uh, rifle right up in here. Though it is definitely not the easiest thing in the world to accomplish. Because you really should do it while you're transforming him. But you can totally get it in there. Now, I kind of have a problem with mine sometimes where these front two sections really want to squeeze together and run into each other. But there he is, about as complete as you can get. So let's go ahead and skip on to transformation because that's where this guy is 
really a bit of a bear. And move the camera up to make some more room here. Go ahead and pull the missile pods off the front because you don't need those. You can go ahead and remove the gun. The arms already have disconnected themselves, so we're already halfway there on that. So just kind of move these out of the way for the time being. And he's like, Bruh! wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. All right, so pull off these side panels. You can see there's just a tab and a slot right there. This guy just double folds up, very nice and neat, like so. Go ahead and unpeg that from the thighs and leave them out like so. Now, I transformed the wheels earlier, so go ahead and put those back into feet mode, make life easy, or use hover truck. You can totally put them in hover truck mode if you want. Now this is where things get a little bit fun. Go ahead and split the legs. You've got a tab here and tab there. You want to grab this section and flip it around this way. Very nice. And sort of untab this. So you can see this kind of slot thing here. It slots into the bottom of the foot. And just turn your leg up here. And you'll see that'll just go blink. And then you go Dink, and that fills out the leg. We'll do the same thing on this side. All the tabbing together, and blink. And you got some decently filled out legs. That's pretty cool. Come up here, flip down the little side skirts, and you can, well, don't know what that was. Go ahead and pop that guy down there. So now you have a partially transformed Magnus. Go ahead and spread the arms out and this is where things get interesting you uh, which way we, okay this way you want to grab up here and rotate down and all of this will fill in that gap go ahead and push this up and get your top of the shoulder pauldrony thing do the same thing on this side except do it upside down because that's what matters flip this back down looking pretty good so far and then you can slide the wrist armor up reeling the hands and then you want to flip this in like so and around so that your arms are like this so like these and now you want to come to your cab section. You want to fold the wheels underneath. Pull the cab up. And you can see the head totally under there. Totally visible head syndrome. And you're going to hit him with the back here. This is also a little bit neat. Fold the smokestack section under. And push the roof down. It is a little scary because it's going to get hung up right about there. It gets hung up right here on the hinges. Flip the head up, like so. Slide the whole thing down. You got this nice slider under here. And collapse the truck onto the back till it's nice and even. And then you got big old tabs right there. And you got slots right there in the side windows. And just line everybody up. Tab everybody together, like so. And there you've got Magnus totally in his robot mode. And I turned on the exposure a little bit because all the white stuff now pops out and makes him very hard to see against the white background. But he's very, very cool Magnus. Now if you really need to finish things up, you grab these shoulder missiles and peg them in here on the sides. Uh, for some reason, this one got loose after the first couple of transformations. I couldn't tell you why, but that's what happens. You grab his gun and flip the big old handle down. It, you think it would stop, but it doesn't. And then it can totally fit in his open hand, like so. And now he's finally technically done. And that is a really good-looking Ultra Magnus. He's got the right kind of color. 
He's got the obligatory chest with the fake windows there. He's got the Autobot emblem over here, which once again, I just made uh, one fit to that size. Worked out really good. He's covered in blue paint, white paint, uh, <laughs> a little bit extra blue paint there that wasn't necessary. Red paint. You got red plastics, some more white paint here on this crotch piece, and some silverish grayish colors along the way. You got some nice molded details back there, still from truck mode, but looks very, very good. Same thing going on here, and the complete uh, cab on the backside. Now, interesting fact it looks like Magic Square is releasing a um, Power Master Optimus that is based exclusively on this mold, um, which basically flip this around, paint this red, give them a different head, flip the arms backwards, and there you go. And also these tabs will function to get the God Bomber kind of pieces on him. So that's an interesting thing to look forward to in the future, even though actually they'll be releasing their own version of normal Optimus Prime as well. So as for articulation, the head is on a bit of a swivel, so you can get a bit of a neck joint to pop up there. He does have light piping, although it's very, very difficult to see because the head is blue and therefore the, and the eyes are blue. It is actually on a swivel as well, which is very tight. Just be careful of these super pointy, very thin antenna. The arms are on a bloop out joint there and then rotate all the way around. And of course, if you want to get a bit of a butterfly for that effect, you can pull it out and do that, it's fine. Um, you do get bicep rotation there, single jointed elbow gets you to 90. And the hands do articulate ever so slightly. Uh, can't quite rotate because the thing is in the way. I wonder if you can push it in just a little bit further and clear up the hand. Nope. Okay. Doesn't work. So you you can have wrist rotation, but the things are in the way. Speaking of rotation, we do have uh, we do have waist rotation and technically reverse ab crunch due to transformation and forward ab crunch as well. I kind of forgot about that. So he can hunch over. A little bit. Legs are mounted on ball joints. You can do full Monty. You can do a decent Jean Claude, but it hangs up on the center bit. So the side skirts are only here for transformation purposes. You do get thigh rotation, which is good. Big chunky knee joint. Get a bit over 90, de 90 degrees there. And absolutely ridiculous ankle tilt. So he can do your ridiculous. Magic Square splits. And sadly, if you don't have him on a good surface, he'll probably do that fairly often. And for comparison, here he is with his Magic Square mate. Little bitty New Age Bumblebee. And a really prevalent comparison with DX9 Dutch. So he's actually probably right about the same size for Magnus over Dutch, at least. Uh, so that's actually pretty good. I like now how tall he is. And to bring in a better you know, comparison with a tall DX9. So <laughs> Grimlock still is way taller even than him. So, I mean, at a head, he's at least, you know, there. So that's pretty good. And just for giggles, there's Wally. Is a little bit, a little bit taller than his knee, probably. Get a better size shot here. That's pretty cool. Now I only have one other Ultra Magnus to compare him to, but he's currently being eaten by a giant dinosaur, so it's a little hard to bring him out. But I'll bring out one other thing that he does come with, and he comes with this itty bitty matrix of leadership. It's painted very nicely with the silver, the bronze coppery color and then blue sparkly in the middle but i don't know what he's supposed to do with it um i guess he can hold it technically speaking maybe maybe he can hold it i can't quite get it in his hand to be totally honest yeah. okay so i got it in one one hand there let's go ahead and pull out both hands let's see if i can get him to try to hold the matrix but I don't think it's gonna work we shall see the 
getting it past that finger is not easy. Okay, so he can hold this tiny matrix, but he can't like put it in his chest because his chest does not open. And of course, it's not going to work with DX9 Dutch, so there's that. So really kind of hoping that uh, if they do a hot rod in the future or when they do their uh, small version of the Light of Freedom, uh, they will give us one that, well, that will probably go into. Because, I mean, it's a neat accessory, but it just doesn't work for anything when it comes to this guy. So, I don't know. I mean, as a figure, he's pretty cool. I'm going to leave him in bot mode. So, even though he has a pretty neat and accurate uh, vehicle mode, it's not going to be anything close to anything else for comparison reasons. So, there's that. And I kind of wish he had other weapons storage in this mode. Maybe... No, he's not going to He's not gonna store his gun anywhere. Just kind of up in there. No, nope, that's a bad idea. Okay. But I like him. He's neat. And for the price, which I think was about $35, you're really not going to get a better small Magnus. At least not with this aesthetic. Uh, you can get the Iron Factory, I think. That, but that's a bit more stylized. I think that's actually an upcoming one. But overall, I dig him. I like him a lot. And he's going to work out real well with the rest of my G1 uh, transforming mini figures like so. But guys, if you like this version of Ultra Magnus, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe -ish button down there if for some reason you're new to the channel. And uh, if you want to, go ahead and check out the Patreon. If you want to help support the channel and keep things moving forward throughout the year, you could definitely use more patrons. And there's even a $1 option if you really don't have that much to donate. So every little bit absolutely does help. And also, you can totally grab a Shoki shirt and go to help channel. Plus, you can show that you're part of the Shoki Nation. I want to work on more shirts this year so there's more cool stuff for you guys to actually get but that's it for this third party transformers review and i will catch you guys on the next one remember as always to keep on nerding <laughs>